Are you struggling with your social media content and what to write and when? Well, you are in luck because this episode of Be The Brain TV is going to help you solve that problem. Stay tuned. Welcome to Be The Brain TV. Hey guys, it's your girl Andrea with Be The Brand TV and you are in the place to be to live your value, love yourself enough to be yourself and lead with intention and purpose. As I mentioned in the preview, listen, we are tackling that challenge of not knowing what to write in your content. I am going to help you with 10 steps that are going to get you over this hump and overcome this challenge. Let's go ahead and get started with a caveat. The first thing you need to know, it's not one of the steps because that would make it 12 steps. The first thing you need to know is your business, think of your business as a person, as one person, an extension of you. And then think of your target audience as one person, someone you're trying to get to know, a friend you're trying to help out, one person. Now, the rest of the steps will make sense because you're talking between two people. You're not trying to talk to the masses. You're talking to the one person and you are going to do what you do in any other relationship. And that is find common ground and relate to that common ground and hold that person's hand, starting with them where they are. So the first step in overcoming this whole issue of not knowing what to write in your content is determining the problem you're trying to solve for them. What is that problem? What is this issue that you have found the solution for and feel so passionately about? Step number two is how did you arrive to the conclusion that what you're offering is the right solution? So first step, what is the challenge? Second step is how did you personally come to the conclusion that what you're offering to your target audience is the right solution to this problem? Now, the third thing is, how does the way you arrived at this conclusion relate to your target audience's situation? And this is important because you are going to have to go back to the very beginning of when you had the problem yourself because that's where your client is and you need to meet them where they are. So you have to hold their hand starting at point zero and help them along to reach the same conclusion you reached in that your solution is the answer to their problem. All right, step number four is to determine those major pain points that you hit along the way. So for instance, <clears throat> If your issue is anxiety and you are providing them with a pill, a fix to being to, to overcoming anxiety, what were some of the major pain points you went through to reach the solution? Did you stumble and fall at point A and then you stumbled and fell again at point S? All right, what were those stumbling blocks and how did you overcome them? Because chances are your audience is going to have to go through those same stumbling blocks. So you want to identify those major pain points that help you overcome the, overcome the problem and reach the solution that you are now providing them. All right, step number five, I think that's what we're on, <laughs> is now that you've identified those pain points, you've got to create buckets for them. I'll give you an example. I know when I'm working with a client that there are three main areas that I wanna make sure I hit to help them develop a personal brand that can be authentic and create marketing strategies that really attract and engage and convert their audience. So the first bucket is understanding their brand heritage. Where did all this come from? Why am I doing this in the first place? How does the formula of influence and experience get me to where I am today? And how can I use that in my business? The next step that I take them through is their brand messaging step. And that is the voice of their business. What is it that we're trying to convey? What are those common messages that are going to resonate throughout every touch point that I have with my client that these are messages that matter? And then the final 
uh, bucket that I talk about with my business is the brand legacy bucket. And that is a lot of the visibility of your brand. What impression are you leaving behind? What is going to be the legacy of your business when someone has finished working with you and you want them to go forth and then like sing from the rooftop how awesome you are? So for me, I've got three buckets brand heritage, brand messaging, and brand legacy. So when you've established those pain points that you know your client is going to have to overcome to get to the solution that you know is going to work for them, you need to create buckets for those different pain points because that is where you're going to draw content for your social media. That's where that is going to come from. All right, <clears throat> now that you've created those buckets based on the pain point, it's time for you to start remembering those emotions and feelings you felt during each one of those pain points. This is a great time for you to write those things down underneath each bucket so that you know exactly what it is you felt, the emotions you went through, the experiences you had, the circumstances you found yourself in. You want to remember those things because that is going to help you when you're creating your content relate to your target audience. It's from these little emotions and feelings you are going to tap into your target audience's emotions and feelings, and they will begin to see, wow, this person really does get me. She definitely understands. She's feeling the same thing that I was feeling. All right, the next step is from those emotions and feelings, create messages and lessons from them. What did you learn from experiencing that? What were along the line, along the journey of creating the solution to the problem, hitting these various pain points, what were some lessons you learned from each of those different emotions and feelings at each of the different pain points? Does that make sense? Number eight is to determine what visuals can personify those feelings and emotions. I know you know what I'm talking about. You look at an image, you smell something, you see a certain color, a certain print, and it takes you back and you remember exactly how you felt or what was going on at that particular time in your life. That is a nonverbal message and you want to be able to convey that just as much as you want to convey the actual message that will be in the post under the picture or under the video. Um, so you want to make sure that you are thinking about any visual that will help you personify the feeling or emotion that you were having during these various pain points, okay? During these various lessons. The number nine is to determine which platform you are going to use to share this content with, okay? So this is important because you have to know who your target audience is and where they are. And when you know this information and you go to those various platforms, really study them and determine how people are speaking and how people are getting information. So you don't want to be on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you put the exact same picture up with the exact same words and the exact same tone because people are not speaking the same way on those different platforms. Is it okay to have the same picture? Absolutely. But the content below needs to change according to the platform and how people are communicating on that platform. So it's important to determine which platform you want to use, you want to share the content on, and make sure that you know how the people on that platform prefer their information. And then the last step to overcome this challenge of knowing what type of content to create for your business is to create a strategy based on the buckets that we created earlier that were the pain points that you know you hit when you were solving this problem for yourself. You want to create a social media strategy that pulls from each of those buckets based on what it is you want to share with them what your call to action is, what course you're selling, what product you're selling that particular day, that particular week or month. You want to make sure that you're pulling from the right bucket that is going to pull on the heartstrings and relate to that one person in your target audience that you're speaking to. 
All right, guys, I hope that helps you. The idea was to give you 10 steps to help you overcome the overwhelm of creating content for your social media strategy. Please, 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 if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, share it with your friends. And then also remember that if you have not already, subscribe to my channel. We're doing great things over here on Be The Brand TV. In addition to that, I promised you a gift. And that is my Highway 8 Road to Your Inner Influencer video mini course. It's a great way for you to tap into some of the things that we talked about today to help you sort of identify that one person that your brand is going to represent and identify that one person that you will be talking to in your target audience. So if you are still a little bit unsure about how to create the conversation between the two, this mini video course will help you. It is absolutely free. You will receive four videos over the course of four days with worksheets that will help you answer those questions that are going to be shared with you throughout the mini course. So make sure you grab that below as well. I will put that down in the description. And otherwise, guys, I will see you next week.